I absolutely love nail forms and all the customization that it gives me for all of my clients and any nails that I do. A lot of people offer tips over nail forms because they find nail forms to be overwhelming and confusing and hard to apply. So today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do that and break it down for you. Hey guys, Liz Morris here from The Nail Hub and I wanted to go over nail forms. Nail forms are one of those things that when you first get started doing nails, nail forms are like the most difficult thing to do. Nobody understands them and it isn't until much later that you finally get the hang of it and by then you might already just be addicted to gluing tips onto nails. So I wanted to talk about some of the benefits of using forms and go over exactly how you're going to use them. All right, so before we get started, let's do a little bit of an overview on this video. We're gonna talk about form shapes. What I mean by this is the different kinds of forms that there are and how you can choose the ones that are best for you. We're gonna talk about application. We're gonna talk about creating different nail shapes using um, some folding techniques and some pinching techniques on our forms. And a lot of people don't realize that you can actually create the nail shape just from the form placement. We're also gonna talk about how to trim forms to make them fit better. And I'm also gonna show you some tricks which I like to call Frankenstein forms that allow you to address situations where you may not have the perfect form for that finger, okay? Terminology we're gonna to discuss today is butterfly, cat ears, which is funny because now we're getting into animals, C-curve, wings, and tabs. And if you watched last week's video, you should know exactly what a C-curve is. If you didn't watch last week's video, or if you're wanting to catch up on these fundamental videos, I highly suggest you start from the beginning. A lot of the questions I get asked under my videos are things that I've addressed in previous ones, and not that you can't start right from this video, but all of the videos leading up to this are really gonna help you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into doing some forms. All right, so I have some different types of forms here. I'm just gonna show you a few different ones. And basically, whenever we're going to do forms, we need a nail form. And we also are going to need a pair of scissors. So let me just rip off a few here. And I'll show you all the different kinds that I have. I actually own, well, these are the ones that I own now. I've actually boiled it down. I used to have way more. And a lot of times I get forms as samples or I get them, um, you know, uh, when I invest in a brand for the nail hub. Um, so I do have lots of different forms here. So you need a good sharp pair of scissors. Um, these ones I love because they're rose gold and I just think they're really pretty and they are perfectly sharp and pointy and they cut really well. So I like those. Um, so the different forms here, you can see there's a little bit of differences between them. This one over here is what I would consider a butterfly form. If you look at the outer shape, it kind of looks like it has butterfly wings on it. This one would also kind of be considered a butterfly shape if we just look at it from here. So anytime where you've got these kind of butterfly wings where you've got the larger tab and then smaller tabs and it has that kind of curved butterfly shape, this is gonna be considered a butterfly form. So if you ever hear the term butterfly, now you're gonna know exactly what someone's talking about. Then you've got more of the traditional style forms. So it's traditional style, um, they have basically just an oval shape here and then tabs that close on the bottom. You can see that this is also more of a traditional style, except this one has an elongated tab on one side, and I'll show you what that is for, okay? You'll also notice that all of the forms have slightly different styles, but they all have some type of line on them. So I like forms where they have both curved and straight lines. I find those to be really helpful. You can see this one has a lot of lines and also some color on it. And this one is a little bit more simplified than this one. And you can see that it's got like a stiletto shape on it. It's got kind of a squoval and then it has the straight lines on the side. This one has an oval line in the center, all the different lengths. And it also has the straight lines going down. And then this one is similar to that. It has some squoval lines, oval lines, and the straight lines. And it also has a very bold center line with small, medium, and large measurements on here for the length of nail, okay? All the forms are going to have some type of center dot or center sticker that can be pulled out like so. I'll talk about what we use this for in a second. And all of the forms should have some kind of serration here or an opening here where you're able to open the tabs on the form, okay? 
So all of these are similar, but a little bit different. And this one, if you're wondering why it has this serration here, it's because if you wanted to make an extremely long nail, and you can see how much, if I line these up, how much longer it is than a traditional form, or even this one, it's about double length. If I were to line this up, it goes well beyond this regular form. It goes all the way down. These are for extreme stilettos, but I'll also show you how you can do extreme stiletto shapes with even a form like this in just a second. Um, if you wanted to use a regular length, you could actually just peel off this portion and just use the upper half, or you could leave it complete and use the full length of the form to create a very extreme stiletto shape, okay? So let's talk really quick with the most basic one. So the first thing we're gonna do when we do our nail form application is we want to peel the form off from the backing. If you're wearing gloves, this can be a little bit difficult to do. So this is one of the few times that I recommend you practice without gloves on. Um, now, also depending on the forms that you're using, if you're using high quality forms, you aren't going to have an issue with this. If you're using those cheap gold ones that you've seen uh, from beauty school or really, really cheaply made ones, what you're gonna find is that this type of foil comes off when you do your actual sculptured nails. And again, if you run into that, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But a lot of times you either put the sticker like this sticky side um, down to prevent that cheap foil from peeling off inside of your enhancement, or a lot of people actually put the sticker this way. And why do we do this? Well, there's a couple reasons. One, it creates a little bit more reinforcement in the paper here. So the paper in here is not going to be bent very easily and it kind of just reinforces that. The other reason is that if we put this um, sticker side up where it's not sticky, we're able to use, uh, if you wanna use C-curve uh, tubes, which I don't have one, but essentially it's like a tube that you put underneath, you're able to actually roll the form on a pen even or on a C-curve tube or something like that and it's not going to stick to whatever you put it on. A lot of um, times you'll see uh, elite nail techs or even competitors or people really trying to get a perfect C-curve they'll roll the form on a, a round shape, and what it does is it kind of molds the form into a nice curved shape, okay? So that's just one little trick. Um, but that's why you would opt for uh, sticky side down or sticky side up are the two different ones. But if you are using, if you are using cheap gold, like those cheap gold beauty school nail forms, they're like square, I often will actually do the sticky side out so that way that there's no foil that's gonna get stuck underneath my nail when I do my enhancement, because that gold foil does peel off really easily. So you can do it either way. You can put the sticker up or the sticker down, okay? All right, the next thing we're gonna do when we put on our form is the first thing I want you to do is I want you to open these tabs. A lot of nail techs do not do this. They actually just leave them closed and they put the form on right away. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the two in just a second, okay? So we're gonna open those, those tabs and I'm just gonna zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. And I'm going to look at how it lines up on my finger, okay? So can you see that that black line, that big, bold black line is running right down the center of my nail, okay? And even if I just were to put this on here gingerly like that, okay? I wanna look at this black line and I wanna make sure it's in the center of my fingernail, but Everyone's fingernails are crooked. So you can see that my finger actually goes this way and then my nail goes that way. So if we were to only line up our form with our fingernail, you'll notice that it might be crooked. My nail would actually be going off that way, especially if it's really, really long. So the other thing I wanna look at is I wanna look at the bones of my hand. So if I look at my nails all the way down to where the bones in my hand are, right in here you can see, if I stretch out my fingers, you can see I've got the bones here. I wanna line my form up with that so that I get a really nice straight look all the way out till the end of my finger, okay? So if I take this and I look, straight line, I draw that imaginary line. So black line, and if I were to draw this imaginary line all the way down my finger, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. To me, it looks like it actually does line up with the bone of my hand. Can you guys see that here? And then all the way up here, okay? So this is the first thing you wanna do is watch your center line. This is a big, big deal. Now, a lot of people, they get to this point and they immediately turn the finger and they try to line up the tabs. So let me do this. I'm gonna turn this to the side 
and I'm going to line up the tabs. Or some people even do this before they put the form on the finger. Okay, so I've got my tabs perfectly lined up. Look what just happened. All right, so this is a rookie mistake. When you close your nail form, you should always watch the center line because not always do the forms line or the, the tabs line up completely or they might be for a different purpose. So let me show you again with a different nail form. All right, so I've got this one. I'm going to open. I'm going to line up that center line with the center of my finger and all the way down my nail. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently close this. And again, it depends on the shape you're going to do, but I'm just going to do like a little stiletto shape. I'm going to gently close this and I'm going to keep that black line perfectly in the center of the nail form. Can you see how that's perfectly in the center? You'll see the tab sticking out from underneath. So let me bend it over a little bit. Okay. But can you see how that black line is perfectly down the center of the nail form? And then I can follow that line all the way down to the bones of my finger. And I've got my form on perfectly straight. This is step one. So step one is making sure that the form is perfectly straight, not only with the fingernail, but all the way down the finger. And when you close the form, you want to watch your top center line. Don't worry about looking at it from here. I want you to focus on making sure that that center line is perfectly symmetrically folded in the center and it stays that way all the way down the form, okay? This is the biggest thing that is gonna make a huge difference with your forms. So let's look at a slightly different form with the same application. Um, and before I do that, I know you guys are gonna ask me really quick, what the heck, why is this sticking out? Well, these are very low profile forms. So what this is made for is so that I can close this, the form will not pop open, but you'll see in a second how short this form is compared to some of those butterfly ones. So butterfly forms actually usually stick out about that far below your finger. These forms are low profile, and so it keeps the form closed, but it doesn't stick out way below your finger. That way when you put your hands in a smaller lamp, you're not um, hitting the bottom of the form and you're not scraping your nails on the top of the lamp. All right, so let's look at a slightly different form. Same idea, because I wanna show you guys different ones. Same idea, I'm gonna take the center sticker off. I'm gonna put it right here to reinforce the paper. And again, this is completely optional, but most people do this because the forms can be pretty flimsy. Now, if you have rock hard forms, you don't need to necessarily put that sticker underneath. I'm going to open the form and I'm going to line up that center line with my finger all the way down the bones of my hand. And these ones are a little bit more difficult because they're reflective. So I'm gonna try and angle my hand so you don't see a reflection. Okay, so can you see that black line down the center of my fingernail and also down the bones of my hand? And then what I'm gonna do from the side, which is a little bit easier for me, is I'm going to close this nail form evenly on both sides to keep that center black line in the center of the nail form. Okay, can you guys see that? So black line all the way down at the center of the nail form. All right? All right. And then last but not least, oh, and I wanted to show you, I'll show you the difference between these in a second. I'll keep those so I can show you how much they hang out, okay? Some of them are gonna be really small, so you can put this on the back. Open, always open these tabs, always, always, always. Close with, and this one's a little bit longer. You can see it's a really long form. So there's that black line. I want to keep that black line, or this one has kind of like a small double line. I want to keep that black line perfectly in the center of the nail form. Sometimes closing the very outer edge, like out here, is the easiest way to make sure it's in the center. Because if this is centered, then usually this is also centered. Okay? So the biggest difference with these longer butterfly forms is you're going to see a lot more security being done underneath here, it's gonna feel much more secure on the finger because you're able to actually close all of this all the way underneath, okay? So once you have your center line centered on the finger, all the way down the fingernail like this, all the way down to the bones of the hand, okay? And you've got the center line pinched perfectly so that the form is centered, the C curve is centered, okay? So that line should be perfectly in the center of your, um, of your nail form, all right? So this is like half the battle. Half the battle is learning how to close the form and also how to line it up on the finger. This is a big deal and this is gonna make a huge difference. If you pay attention to this center line, then you're going to have a much easier time doing everything else, okay? So now I have this center line done. I have it aligned on my finger. 
Now it's time to look at something which is the way that it's angled from the side, okay? So if I look at this nail form from the side, I wanna show you what it would look like if I didn't open these tabs. If I don't open these and I just put this on my finger, <clears throat> same thing, I can still line it up, but in order to get this to fit underneath, okay, what I see a lot of nail techs do is they keep this closed and they pinch it, okay? But look at what my nail form looks like from the side when I do that. Can you see how much this angles down? And now I've got the same issue I had with those white nail tips that I had from last week's video. I've got a bird beak nail. And we do not want bird beak nails. We do not want bird talons. So you can see how much this just completely angles downward. And I don't want this. And it's mainly because if I'm able to squeeze this, it means there's extra material here and the whole nail is gonna be curving downward, okay? So we do not want that. We do not want bird beak, talon, whatever you wanna call them, style nails. So let me show you one more time the proper way. Okay. And again, you can close this if you want to. If you want to put it, if it's easier for you to do it before you put it on your finger, you can completely do that. Um, all you need to do is just watch it here on the very, very tip. Keep it open most of the way. And then you can also just put the form on like that with one hand. That sometimes people find is much easier if they're doing the forms on themselves. And you can also do that on someone else. You can put the form up like that and it's already closed perfectly on the very tip of it, but you're gonna to need to use slightly longer forms in order to be able to do that, okay? So let's watch that center line again, okay? And then I can just slide my hand up. All right, now usually when these tabs barely touch, I'm not able to actually like pinch them together, they just barely touch, check out the angle of my nail form, all right? So this actually looks pretty dang good. And once I finish kind of like pinching everything closed, okay, so now I've got this like all pinched closed, okay, can you see how this is a much nicer angle? Now it still is sloping downwards, but definitely not as much as the previous one was. And the angle really has a big effect on how your nails turn out. If you remember from last week, If we have our apex, we're, we've got thin at the cuticle, we're gonna build up our apex, but as we come out here, this tip is gonna stay much thicker if this is lower than the cuticle area. So really what I want to do is I want to have the cuticle area here line up an imaginary line. If I were to draw a straight line straight out from my cuticle area, I want that to line up. So at the tip of my pen, right, the tip of my pen is now in line with my cuticle. See how much lower the form is than the tip of my pen? So this form needs to come up a little bit. There's two ways to do that. One is open this up and tip it up a little bit. If you want this to be a super long stiletto nail at this, it's gonna basically pinch right here at the very, very, very tip of the form. Then what I can do is loosen this a little bit on my finger, tip that up and then re-secure it. So just wiggle, wiggle, and then kind of re-secure it here. So can you see how I'm able to adjust that? It looks funny with my natural nail because my natural nail does have a nice curve to it. But if I were to draw an imaginary line from the cuticle all the way out to the very, very, very tip of this nail, can you see how it's like now perfectly lined up? That is what you want because you wanna keep the free edge or the tip of the nail thin and the cuticle area thin and we want to build up the apex here and then we want it to gradually go down into the tip of our nail, just like in that video that I showed you guys last week when I drew that out for you, okay? So that's one way you can do it. The other way you can do it is if it is slightly tipped down and you haven't chosen your length yet, the other thing that's gonna affect your nail form length, or sorry, your nail form angle is the length of the nail that you're gonna do. So let's say I put on this nail form, it's only pinched out to here to the very, very tip of the nail form, but let's say my client or myself, I want nails to be about this length to this third line. Watch what happens when I pinch the nail to the third line. So I'm gonna pinch the form closed so that the tip of my little mini kitten stiletto is right at that third line, okay? So can you see like one, one, two, three, and now it's closed right here on that third line. So I can change the length of my nail just by pinching the form closed because now when I extend the product out, I'm only gonna go to here and I'm automatically gonna create a really nice 
kitten or almond shape, if I want to round out the tip a little bit more, I'm going to be able to make a really, really nice nail shape just by pinching my form closed. And also watch what happens when you pinch it closed. So if you ignore this part right here, ignore the, the tip of the form, look how nicely lined up that third line here is right here, lines up with my cuticle area again. So the more you shorten your forms, the more you pinch them closer to the finger, it's going to raise up the tip of the nail that you're creating. See how this all angles down, but this is pinched closed. We're not gonna put any product out here. We're only gonna put product to right there. So we're gonna put product all the way from our cuticle all the way out to this third line. And look how just by pinching that form closed, I'm able to create a nice straight line from the tip of the nail all the way to the cuticle area. Okay, so I know this is overwhelming, but basically what you want to look for is the tabs should literally barely touch when you close the form and when you put it on the finger. Don't overlap the form tabs. You don't want to do that. You want to open them up, have them open and have them barely touch. That's a good indicator that you've got the perfect angle from the side of the nail. And if I'm doing quick salon nails and I just I need to get a client in and out in like 45 minutes, I don't even really check from the side. I use this as my guide to make sure that this angle is good and it's gonna be perfect for salon level work. We're not talking about, you know, doing the cover of Vogue magazine nails. We're talking about, you know, doing a client in 45 minutes, getting them in and out. They're gonna get very high quality nails, but you can use tricks like this to make sure that your work is perfect without even having to look from the side. And you'll also notice that just by lining up this center line on the top of my form and pinching it perfectly closed with this center line all the way down, that my tabs automatically line up, okay? So without taking this off, I'm just gonna quickly show you the difference in the length of the form. So can you see that this butterfly style sticks out well below the finger, but the advantage of it is that I'm able to really secure it on the finger. Like this form is not going anywhere on this finger. Or if you like lower profile because you use a very, very small lamp, you can also use tabs, uh, sorry, forms with tabs like these. Or the other thing you can do if you don't have forms like these that have the extended tab, um, or you don't have ones that have like this kind of thing, let's say, you know, your, your forms have a really, really, really short tab. Let me rip this off. All right, so let's say like your, your forms barely touch on the bottom. And some of them are even like this, to be honest, okay? Some of them are like that bad. What you can do is take the center dot from your nail form and instead of putting it underneath, or even you can put an extra one, you can take this and just put it on the bottom of your nail form and pinch it closed. Okay, so this will keep, obviously this is not straight. I'm just saying if you had a nail form that kept popping open on you, just take an extra sticker and just pinch it closed on the bottom. It'll keep even those cheapo gold nail forms that you get in nail school, it'll keep them from popping open. Okay, so that's a good trick to put it underneath. It'll keep it secure. All right, so we talked about the center line. We talked about how to pinch the form closed. We also talked about the angle from the side and how these tabs should barely touch. And that lets you know that you've got a good angle on your nail form that you're gonna create a nice nail shape. And the other reason why we do this is not only because we want the free edge and the cuticle area to be thin. So we want it to be thin here, we want it to be thin here, and we want the majority of the product to be in here and then extend out and gradually you know, blend into the tip of the nail. The other reason why is if we look at the sidewall of my nail, so here is my sidewall, and I'm going to line it up with that third line. Can you see that I'm gonna get like a nice straight shot from my real sidewall out to the tip of the form, okay? This is the other thing that we wanna look at is the reason why we worry about the nail form angle is we want our sidewalls to be nice and straight. We want them to be strong, just like I showed you guys in my last video. And so if my nail form is tipped down too much, I'm not going to be able to do that. So let me again show you. This is the wrong way. So I'm not even gonna open my tabs. I'm gonna put this here, okay? I'm gonna worry about lining up my thing under here. I'm gonna pinch it closed, okay? And then I'm gonna punch that and then pinch that, okay? So now I've got my nail form that is hooking downward and I don't have my center line perfectly centered anymore. So the more, the longer the nail that I create, the more that my C curve is gonna be twisted. Can you see how my C curve is lopsided? It goes high on one side and low on the other. That's why we wanna be careful about how we close it. Our C curve is gonna twist. 
So it's going to twist from one side to the other, depending on which way you're doing it. If you're not paying attention to the C curve underneath your nail form, you're going to end up with a twisted long nail and you're not going to be able to get the sidewall straight. Okay. Um, but if I look at this, if I, if I were to build a nail that comes downward and it hooks down, my sidewalls are actually going to also hook downward and I'm going to end up filing notches into my nail. All right. So you want your nail form to be up. You want it to be nice and straight. You want the, whatever the end of the nail that you're going to create, you want that to line up with your cuticle area from the side and you want these tabs to be open so that you're able to do that. You're able to lift it up and you also want to pay attention to the center line. Make sure it goes center all the way down the nail plate and all the way down the finger. Otherwise you're going to end up with a very twisted C curve underneath your nail. Okay. All right. So that's basically the basics on that. So let's talk about once you have that down, let's talk about how we actually get our form to fit properly on our nail. Well, the first thing is we actually want to work on nails that do not have any natural length on them. So if we're going to properly trim our nail form and we're going to properly apply it onto our client, the first thing we want to do is remove the corners of our nail and we want to make this more of an oval shape. All right, so I have my nail here. I'm going to just file off. The corners make them into like more of an almond shape and this is my natural nail so I'm gonna kind of like file from the outside inward all right so when we put on nail forms ideally we want to make the client's nail into this type of almond shape we want to take off the corners because the corners are really going to prevent you from being able to get a nice fit on your nail form and it's going to also um, push into the sides of your nail form and add bulk. And I'm going to show you guys in my next video the difference between a good nail form placement and a bad nail form placement and the difference in thickness between the two. Okay, so I've got my I've got my nail now filed into like a nice oval I'm just gonna do this so I can raise my hand up just a teeny bit. Okay, so I've got a nice oval here. I'm just gonna take any nail form. I'll just use this one since I've got this one left over. Put this on the back. And again, you don't have to do this part, but I do find that it adds a little bit of reinforcement to the nail form, okay? Um, I can line this up. So this is gonna be a little bit difficult on myself because I normally do it this way, but I wanna show you guys kind of what it looks like when you're doing it on a client. So the first thing is I wanna line that center line up on their fingernail. And usually what I do is I just close the very, very, very tip of the nail form, keeping that center line in the center. Okay, so now I've got the nail form closed. I've got that black line all the way in the center of the nail. And then what I do is I turn, once I have all the forms on, I turn the client's hand around so that I can check if their black line goes down uh, not only their fingernail but also down their hand properly that way if i look at this if i were to build nails out like this these nails are going to look straight to my client so that way when my client looks at her fingers like this her nails are going to look nice and straight they're not going to be tipping one way or the other okay so i put the forms on this way on my client then i turn their hand around okay so now i've got my nail form on i'm going to just gently very gently close it closer to my finger, and then I push upwards and secure it onto my actual finger. That way I've got it nice and secure. Then I'm gonna check from the side. And again, I haven't chosen my length yet, but you'll see that I've already got a little bit of a gap here. And sometimes on the sides of your finger, you'll have a gap. So let me just show you, oops. Now, depending on the way that the nail form opens, Okay, you might have a gap once I close this a little bit more. I'm gonna pinch this just a little bit more so it's more of a length that I'm gonna do. Okay, so if I need to adjust this, I can loosen this, tip this up just a tad, and then resecure it. Okay, so I really don't wanna have a big gap underneath my nail here. Now, if you have a little one, it's totally okay because usually the viscosity of gel that we use is gonna float over, or if you're using acrylic, 
It also doesn't matter if there's a teeny little gap underneath. So if you have like your form is kind of like that, where you've got a little gap, don't worry about it. But the other thing I want to look at is I want to look at, does my sidewall of my nail line up with the nail form? And if it doesn't, what I can do is I can get this nail form to push back just a little bit more so that it goes underneath the sides of my finger. So can you see like right here on the side, I have just like the teeniest gap between my sidewall here and like where the nail form is. And also if you have a very elongated hypernicheum, which is that, that um, flesh that you have underneath your natural nail, if that is extended, it's gonna feel really uncomfortable shoving this paper underneath. So let's take a look really quick at how we can adjust this so it feels more comfortable, okay? So I'm gonna take my nail form, and what I'm gonna do is with my scissors, I'm just gonna cut a nice kind of shallow triangle out of the paper. Can you see how I did that? And it doesn't matter if it's a little jagged, don't worry about that, okay? So see how I cut just like a teeny little triangle notch? So what the triangle notch does is it allows you to put that paper even further underneath the bottom of the nail and see how now the paper is able to slide underneath the corner of my fingernail. So that little hypernicheum notch <clears throat> is, is really useful for people that do have an extended hypernicheum, which is the skin underneath there's skin underneath your fingernail. That skin is called the hypernicheum. So if you do have one of those, this little notch fits right around that. It makes it really comfortable. And it's also gonna help you push your form back even further so that the paper gets up underneath even the corners of your nail, okay? So that's your little hypernicheum notch. It's actually easiest to do that when you have the nail form open. So let me just show you on a new one. So I'm just putting the sticker on the back opening the form, okay? So here, again, I'm just gonna put my scissors in there, like that, cut one little notch, and cut another one. See, I was just able to make like that little notch. Some of the forms come with them also, but I find that I would rather like to customize the form then be stuck with one that has a permanent shape to it so I can easily cut this out. So now when I go to put this on my finger, you'll be able to see that I'm able to get that paper just even further up underneath. Can you see the paper goes right up underneath, no gap, and I've got the paper all the way on the corner of my fingernail. So now I'm gonna be able to seamlessly bring product from my real nail out onto the form without any issues. All right, and last but not least, let's talk about cat ears because cat ears or kitten ears, whatever you want to call them, are also extremely important. So I'm going to just close this as if I were doing it. Okay, so I have my nail form on. It looks good from the side, okay? So I've got my cuticle area is lined up with the very, very tip of my nail out here. I could even pinch it closed just a teensy bit more, bring that up a little bit more, okay? So I've got a nice straight line my paper goes underneath my natural nail really nicely so that my corners, I'm able to seamlessly bring that product out without any gaps. And I also don't have a gap underneath my nail either. The paper is perfectly butted up against it. Now, the last thing I wanna look at is from the top. Can you see right here how there's a gap in the paper right here? Can you see there's like bulk here? Okay, so if I push it in, you can see that that looks much nicer if I were to draw a line from my sidewall out onto the nail form. If I push this in, you're gonna see that, wow, that looks much more streamlined. It actually lines up with my finger better. Same thing on this side. I've got a little bit of paper here that's gapping out. All right, so when we leave our nail forms like this, what ends up happening is we have to put product all the way from our sidewall and then we have to get around this paper. So when we try to put product on the sides right here, that's how we end up with those almond nails that like are nice here and then they flare out and then they go back to a nice almond shape. So the flaring is really caused by this paper that sticks out. And yes, there are other reasons why it flares as well, but this is probably one of the number one reasons why. So if I were to even take some pinching tools just to show you what this would look like if I didn't have that paper, okay? So can you see like if I were just to pinch this under just a little bit more, see how I'm able to get product right over my nail onto the paper 
and it's not going to create any bulk underneath or around my fingernail. I'm gonna get a really nice, smooth transition from my nail out onto the nail form, and I'm not gonna end up with like a super wide almond nail. I'm gonna get a nice, nice, straight, sleek, sexy nail, okay? So this is what I wanna do, except the paper isn't following my lead. It keeps wanting to pop out right here. So how do we do that? Okay, so we talked about notches. We talked about the hyponychium notch. We talked about the tabs. We talked about the wings. We talked about the center line. Now we're gonna talk about kitten ears because this is also an awesome trick. Okay, so when I open this up and I cut my little hyponychium notch, and usually you can remember like which clients need this and you'll get very, very, you'll, you'll start to remember which fingers need it, which clients need it, but the little hyponychium notch comes in really handy. So we did that. We're gonna put this on the finger. Okay, and what I want to do is instead of closing my nail form, I just want to get this lined up on my finger like this with that center line going down, and I want to look at something. So I'm not going to close this form, I'm just going to attach it to my finger so I can work with one hand. Okay, so I've got the line centered. I don't have this closed, but that's okay. But I just want to look at where this goes underneath my finger. So once this center line, you have to do this part first, do everything we did first, do the center line, do the hyponychium notch, do your tabs, do everything. Then I want you to look at where your real sidewall, the real sidewall of your nail comes out, okay? So like right here, if I were to put my scissors, line this up, see how if I line up the sidewall of my nail with the nail form, see how that black line is almost perfect to line that up. So that black line on the nail form is perfect. And then on this side, it might actually be a little bit different, so let's look. So I put my sidewall of my real nail, and eh, it's pretty close. It's like just inside that black line, okay? So if I were to do an imaginary line out from my real sidewall, skip over this oval corner and go right out onto the nail form, these two black lines on the sides would actually be pretty dang good for cutting my kitten ears. So I'm gonna take this off, and now we're gonna eliminate any of that bulk that we had on there before. So I'm gonna cut a 45 degree notch here like that and a 45 degree notch here like that okay so this is where the kitten ears come in because they kind of do look like kitten ears they've got little little triangles that come up what this does is it almost makes my nail form like a straw i can take these little tabs that i've created and pull them away from my nail form and now can you see how that form is gonna go right up underneath my fingernail and I'm gonna get a nice streamlined application. So I took that bulky paper away from the nail form and now when I put product out onto the nail form, I'm gonna get perfect, perfect streamlined shape from my real sidewall out onto the form and this paper is not going to push that product outward. I'm gonna get a really, really nice nail. Okay, so that's the kitten ear part. All right, so there you have it. So we talked about the center hyponychium notch that allows us to be able to get that paper under the finger further, and you can customize that for different people. We talked about looking at the angle of the form from the side. So let me just adjust this, okay? So we talked about the angle of the form. We don't want it to tip down. We don't want it to tip up. We want it to be perfectly straight with our finger. We talked about how these tabs usually barely touch when that happens. And most importantly, we talked about the center line so that we're able to keep a nice symmetrical C curve underneath our artificial nail. So let's talk about Frankenstein forms because Frankenstein forms is something that I had to learn how to do on the fly because not every client has the perfect finger. Maybe they have wide fingers that are too wide for the nail form opening. There's just a lot of differences between people's anatomy. And also what happens when you want to do an extension on a toenail and you only have nail forms, which are too small for toes. So let me show you guys really quick how we do this. So I don't know about you, but my thumbs are probably a little bit on the wide side. And definitely my toes are, and I've had clients that have nails that are even wider than mine. So when I put this on here, can you see like how I barely have enough material to even go around my finger? Like it's the papers like cutting in, even if I were to make those kit notches, 
I've just got, it's way too tight for my thumbnail. So I'm gonna show you guys really quick how you can customize this form so that it fits wider fingers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two forms. The first one I'm gonna cut on the two thirds line over here. And I do like forms that have straight lines because it just makes it even easier. And I just cut this completely off like so, okay? Then this one, I'm gonna do the opposite. So two thirds line on this side. All right, so can you see how I've got the same thing going on, but on two different sides of the nail form? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off, take off the tabs. And I'm going to line up, I'm just gonna overlap them a little bit. So I'm gonna have two center lines now, but I usually try to line up the lines so that I have some kind of center line gauge to work with here, okay? So it does do away with your, your ovals as far as the oval here, but can you see that like right here, oops, scissors, this center line here, this block, is now my center line. These two also help me get straight. And what I'm just gonna do is trim out this center portion. So just trim out the little pointy bits in the center. And now I have a really nice wide nail form that I can put on a big toe, I can put it on a really wide finger, and I'm still gonna use that center line, that center track as the the kind of, you know, making sure that I've got my nail form straight. I can also use the two double black lines because they're evenly spaced. Um, but this is really nice for working on toes. If you only have one type of nail form and you need to be able to do a, a wider nail, you can absolutely do that. And you can also do the same thing. You can trim out your hyponychium notch. And especially if it's, you know, a big toe or something, it's a very deep hyponychium. You can trim out your hyponychium notch. You can trim out your kitten ears on the sides to make that fit perfectly, but at least now you've got a double wide form with just the nail forms that you already own. So this is a quick fix for that. Also, the other thing that happens a lot is we get clients that are nail biters, um, or maybe you yourself are a nail biter and, uh, and you struggle with that. So if you look at this, this nail form has kind of a nice medium oval opening. So this might actually work for a nail biter. But if we look at one of my pink ones, okay, can you see how this actually is like a very drastic oval opening? And if I were trying to fit this on, like let's just pretend this square part, on a bin nail, it's really difficult to get that up there. So what you can do, and also if it's like a really square finger opening or if it's got a toe, what you can do is actually trim this so cut your sticker, your center sticker, cut a straight line, and you can even do this for broken ones as well, but if you need to do it perfectly straight across, you take that sticker and you're gonna put it on the back of the nail form like so. So just stick it on the back, okay? So now you've changed your oval opening into a square opening. You can also do this if the person has a broken nail, maybe, maybe their nail goes up on the side because they ripped off half of it, and you've got this nice symmetrical form opening, but that doesn't quite fit their finger. What you can do is even trim, like let's say they broke their nail and it's like high on one side and low on the other because they just ripped it up into you know, their finger. You can do this, you can do high on one side, low on the other, and match it to whatever the opening of their finger is. So if my nail, if my nail goes up high on one side or whatever, if it's kind of wonky, like if my fingernail is kind of like this. Okay, let's just say I had a broken, a broken nail like that. What you can do is now this form is gonna go up higher on one side and you can do your same hyponychium notch. So I can still trim out the center piece. Like so. But now when I put that up there underneath, it's gonna fit up underneath that higher side that I broke off of my nail. Can you guys see that? So you can absolutely customize these forms to work with just about anything. 
So this is why I really like working with forms because I'm able to customize the form and the, the application to any person's anatomy, finger size, nail length, shape that they want, all of those different things. And last but not least, before I end for the day, I know this is a very, very involved video, but I really wanted to go over all the things about forms. And even if you need to watch this video twice, I'd rather have you do that than not get all of the information. Um, I wanna quickly go over how you can adjust the shape that you're gonna do with just the differences in closing a nail form. All right, so I've got my nail form here. Here's the, the big fat one that I did. Okay, so here is All right, so here is my nail form. Now, if I pinch this closed on the tip, you'll notice it automatically makes a stiletto shape, okay? And even if I pinch it closed all the way to like right this last oval line, can you see that if I do like more of an oval opening, it's gonna make a nice oval almond nail? Or if I pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, it's gonna make like a stiletto shape on the nail. So depending on what you wanna do, you can pinch the form closed, to make it pointy on the end, or you can stop short of that and just put your product here, and then it's gonna end up being a nice almond by the time that you do that. You always wanna do a little bit more product than where you wanna file to to give yourself some space, but at least you can use these as a guide and you can pinch the form closed if you want to do a stiletto shape or an almond shape. If you want a square nail, a square nail you're going to leave open all the way along, it's gonna be a perfect barrel. So if I'm gonna do a square nail, I want that center line to stay in the center, but I'm not going to pinch the, op the, the tip of it closed, okay? So this would be open to the client and I would put that on their finger. Um, but you can see that I'm able to make a nice cylinder shape. So this would be a perfect square. And you can also like push the C curve down a little bit once you have it on the finger, but this would be open, whereas this one would be closed. Okay, so here's like a stiletto, a stiletto or an almond, it's gonna be pinched closed, and a square is gonna be um, a perfect cylinder all the way along. So it's gonna be closed underneath, but it's gonna be the same width here as it is out to the opening. That's gonna be a perfect square. And you can also just barely close it if you want more of a tapered square. So you can see that I'm able to do a lot of the shape choice of my nails just by the way that I close the nail form rather than just starting with a generic shape and having to file everything in. And you'll also notice that if I really concentrate on what shape I'm creating, I get a nice C curve because my product is gonna curve around this nail form. I'm not gonna get that super flat shape like I showed you guys with those nail tips. All right, so let's wrap up today's video. We're gonna um, talk about do focus on the lines, not the wings. Um, we talked about, you know, when you close the form, worry about those top lines. Don't worry so much about the wings on the bottom lining up because naturally if you keep that center line straight all the way along, they are gonna line up. So you're gonna be perfect. And it's also gonna avoid mistakes with different types of forms. If they don't have butterfly wings that perfectly close, um, then you're gonna end up, you know, perfectly applying it rather than having to mess up and start over. Definitely adjust the form for each finger. So we talked about the hyponychium notch. We talked about the kitten ears. Um, and we talked about the angle and making sure that everything's fitting properly. So it does take some time to figure it out for every finger. Check your form from all angles. We talked about looking at it from the side, from the top, also down the barrel to make sure our C curve isn't twisting. So make sure you look at everything from all angles because this is kind of the mold for what our nails are gonna look like when we're done sculpting. And absolutely practice, 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 practice. Follow these rules as far as what I told you to focus on, practice it because it is something that takes time to get good at. The first time you do nail forms, you're, you're gonna struggle. They're very awkward in the beginning, but once you get it down, you're gonna be a complete master. All right, so don'ts for the day. We don't wanna wrap the tabs on the top of the finger. We talked about that. They should barely touch on the top of the finger. So don't wrap them, and also don't leave your form closed. You wanna open it up so those tabs are open. Don't worry about the wings underneath. So again, watching that center line, it's gonna line up automatically. Don't stress if it takes you forever. This is the biggest thing I can tell you is when you first start with nail forms, 
This is a long-term game. This isn't, this isn't short-term results. This isn't you're going to be able to do it overnight. This is something that if you get good at nail forms, you're going to be able to go from basic nails to competitions, and nail forms are something that nail tips just cannot do. So it does take time. It does take practice. Don't stress if it does take you forever to get this down. Practice, practice, practice. It does get easier. It does get better, and you do get faster. Myself, I can do a full set of nails just as fast with forms as someone with nail tips. So nail tips are not faster than nail forms. It really depends on what you're doing and also how fast you are at what you're doing. And also check your angle. Don't make bird beaks. As I talked about in my last video, there's nothing worse than making nails that point downward. They're also not structurally sound. So we want to make sure that our forms are pointing the right direction and, uh, and that we're creating nails that are built to last. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I thoroughly enjoyed teaching you it. I know this is overwhelming, but this is not the last time you're gonna see me use nail forms. I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to use nail forms as we start to sculpt nails. I want you to take the time to practice this because this is a big deal. Being able to do nail forms really is, a, is something that's gonna differentiate you from a bunch of other nail techs that are out there. And you're also able to customize this for every single finger, every single nail, whether it's yourself or someone else, you're gonna be able to create custom nails, which is something really cool. Nail tips are literally, you know, 10 sizes fit all, and they rely on glue and they rely on the shape of the nail tip. And honestly, nail forms can be just as fast, if not faster and better than nail tips if you know how to do them. So definitely practice, don't get discouraged. I hope this was helpful and uh, I will be in touch with another video very soon. All right, bye guys.